What's going on everybody? My name is Feeling Shredder. And I've been drifting for about 12 years now. I've made tons of mistakes. So this video is all about how not to screw up your drift career. <laughs> so I've been driving 10 or 12 years now. I've been drifting all over the world. I drive a really fun S14 that I've built. It's got about 500 horsepower. It's set up for pro-am level competition. So it's a really fast, really fun car. It handles fantastic. I've drifted all kinds of other chassis. I've drifted in competition level and party mode and hyperdrive on Netflix. I've done all kinds of cool stuff and I've certainly made my fair share of mistakes. So this video is intended to teach you guys what not to do, learn from my mistakes and help kind of skyrocket your own drifting endeavors where you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. So the first one I think that uh, comes to mind, you know, the number one mistake is being an asshole. And what is an asshole? That means you ask a question, you're genuinely curious, you don't know what the answer is. Someone who you value their opinion gives you great advice, and then you don't take that advice. You go do your own thing anyway. That is an asshole. That is what you're being. Don't be that guy. Uh, I've certainly done that when I was beginning in my drifting endeavors. Aaron Losey, the guy who runs Lone Star Drift, it, you know, gave me all kinds of good advice. And I asked a bunch of questions, and I did the exact opposite. I did what I thought would be smart and I wasted tons of times. I had tons of you know events cut short or hardly even start because something broke or something happened and it was not a, you know, a fun event. So, so some of the things Aaron told me is buy new tires and stop wasting money and time mounting a bunch of used tires. I didn't take that advice. I dumpster dive for as many tires as I could find. Uh, get a simple car that's reliable and runs and drives. I did not do that. I went and bought a 240 with an SR swap Luckily, it ran pretty good, but I certainly did not know how to work on it. And anything that broke, I had to pay someone to fix. And then the third thing I did wrong is someone told me to buy coilovers. I had Nismo shocks and springs on the car, which were who knows how old. I thought that would be good enough because the car was low. So I bought every other suspension arm, every steering component, fancy brakes, all kinds of other dumb stuff that I did not need at all. I should have just bought some decent coilovers, bolted them on, and I would have had way better time going to drift. Number two. You guys should buy a running driving car. Do not buy a project car. That is the worst idea. It will take you a year, maybe more, to get that thing running. And then when it does, it's still gonna be a piece of junk that you have to figure out all the little ins and outs and fix all the gremlins. So buy a running car, a simple car, a reliable car, one that is maybe of this decade or this modern era would be smart. So it's not so old and clapped out. And then just go drive the thing. You know, getting seat time is going to be the only way to get better at drifting. I don't care how much sim time or you know, reading online you do. It, none of that will translate until you actually hit the track in a car that runs and drives. The more laps you do, the quicker you'll get better. Number three, this is taught to me by a good friend, Marty, a very smart shop owner who helped me a lot and mentored me. You know what you know because you know it. Not because you saw it, not because you read it, not because your friend said so, not because a magazine said it. All of that is BS. You know what you know because you know it. So that means test it, try it yourself, and learn from the things that you do on your car. And this kind of goes for everything in life, but we're talking about cars here. So if you want to know if coilovers are good, don't take your buddy's advice, try it. If you want to know if a certain steering angle kit is good or not, or a certain brand tire, try them out. And you'll find out for yourself with you know your own testing whether you like it or not whether it works for your setup because what might work for another friend or another pro driver may not work at all for you it all depends on the full package and a lot of people don't think about that you know your cars needs to be built for a specific reason and the parts that are put on it need to be utilized for exactly that purpose so you know james dean's car with two 95 40 falcons and a 900 horsepower 2j is not the exact same setup as what you guys are doing at home. And if it is, then you don't need to be watching this video. Number four, time and budget management. So first things time, everything takes longer than you think. Always 100% of the time. If you think it's gonna take a week, it's gonna take a month. If you think it's gonna take a year, it's gonna take two. That's just how it goes, especially the first time around. That's gonna be where the experience comes into play. You know, when you pay a mechanic to fix your car $500 and he can do it in an hour and a half, well, it's not that you paid him $500 for an hour and a half worth of work, it's that you paid him for the 10 or 15 years of experience that he has fixing that particular problem 
He knows exactly what tool, exactly the technique, and exactly how to knock it out. Same thing with this. If you guys are doing a build or you know learning how to drive for the first time, it's gonna take a lot more time than you're expecting. So plan for that. And then same with budget. You know, if you think something's gonna cost a hundred dollars, it's gonna cost two hundred. If you feel like a set of coilovers is a thousand bucks, well, that's true that the retail cost of them is a thousand dollars. But you also have to think about the tools it takes to install them, the time, because everyone's time has some value. Some people are more than others, but there's still some value there. You gotta pay for shipping, you gotta pay for fuel to go and get the parts, you gotta pay for all the little things associated around it. And then once you get them installed, they may not be perfect. You might have to pay someone to realign the car. You might have to corner balance the car. You might have to you know, reinstall them because you messed something up or you put one on the wrong side or whatever the case is. Everything always takes longer than you think, and it typically costs quite a bit more than you might expect. So play, plan for that, budget for that, and don't get frustrated whenever things don't go your way. And number five, don't bite off more than you can chew. Plan your build to have the best experience possible. So what do I mean by that? If you're six foot five, then it's probably not a good idea to buy a Miata, even if you love a Miata. If you are four foot nine, it's probably not a great idea to buy a Mustang because you won't fit in the thing, right? And that, those are maybe some bad examples, but just think about what you wanna do in the direction you wanna take in your drifting endeavors. If you are not a mechanic, don't buy a clapped out piece of junk with a one-off engine swap that is gonna need a ton of work. If you want to have a really stylish looking car, then realize that there's gonna be some sacrifice that goes along with that. So I would recommend if you've never drifted before, if you've never been to a drift event, go to one. Don't just buy a car and put a couple parts that you read on the internet or saw in Hoonigan and think you're gonna be this rock star drifter. That's not how it goes for anybody. I don't care how much money you have. So think about that and plan for it. If you wanna be a pro-am driver, do you have the budget? Do you have a truck and trailer because your car will not be street legal? Do you have a mechanic or are you a mechanic? You know, those sorts of things are what go along with being a pro-am competitor driver. If you wanna go into pro one or pro two, do you have an even bigger budget and a full team and everything at your disposal? You know, stay in your lane is what I guess I'm trying to say is use whatever means you have to have the best experience possible. If you are not able to go that route, that doesn't mean you can't start drifting. It just means you might have to dial it back a little bit, get a simpler car, get a 350Z, just a couple of simple mods and go drive the thing. You may find out that you don't even have an aptitude for drifting and you're better behind the camera or you're better at you know shooting sponsorship proposals together and working on a team. You might still get the same enjoyment, maybe even more than some of the drivers do because they have so much stress and so much on their plate that they can't handle it. And so think about that, you know, drifting is a big sport. There are lots of jobs that are associated with it, not just driver, although that may be the most fun on paper. When it comes down to it, it takes a lot of work. So maybe you're a lazy person, you like playing video games more than anything. And so that's what you should focus on, you know? You could be a streamer, you could be, you know, something like that instead. And then you could still go to drift events, you could be an announcer, you could be a, a volunteer, you could help as a spotter, and you get still just the same amount of enjoyment. You get to ride in the passenger seat, have a great time at events, and don't have to have the financial responsibility of owning a truck, a trailer, a drift car, and then crashing it on your first lap and just you know, wanting to kill yourself because you're so mad that what just happened was not what you were hoping for. All right, so that was five things. Hopefully everybody learned something. Hopefully it wasn't too hard to digest. I appreciate you guys listening all along. If you wanna see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at Shredder Racing, also on YouTube. And if you guys wanna come and hang out and see me in, per in person, I'm at every Lone Star Drift event. Come give me a high five, ask to take a ride along, and I'll take you for a ride in my car. Ah!